schizophrenics, what were the first signs you experienced before you were diagnosed? Retroactively, I can sort of see where I first started showing symptoms. But I didn't really recognize them as symptoms until much much later. Like 10 years. When I was a teenager, I started showing depression-like symptoms. Looking back, I think these were prodromal symptoms as opposed to depression. They tried different threes and nothing really helped. A few years later, my symptoms changed. I wasn't reporting them, though. I didn't recognize them as symptoms. I was experiencing oral and visual hallucinations. I never told anyone at the time, because I attributed these hallucinations to paranormal experiences. Like, my visual hallucinations were shadow people. I assumed I was seeing shadow people as opposed to hallucinating shadow people. The oral hallucinations were like number stations and morse code. Actually, when number stations got really popular on slash x slash in like, 2009 ish, that's what I thought I was hearing. This video is the closest to what I heard. Like my teeth were broadcasting them up my jaw bones. Somehow, it doesn't make sense. But yeah no, that's the whole illness. Anyway around 2015, I had a huge breakdown. I don't really want to go into the details of this breakdown, but basically if I hadn't had it, I wouldn't have my current diagnosis. Schizophrenic here. I had a very rough teenage years which ended with a friend of mine being stabbed and dying right in front of me. I was at the time doing mad weed coke ketamine and shrooms regularly. After he died my life stopped. Cold turkey from everything I was on and I just stopped. Within those 6 months, where I did nothing I heard a voice, and it was grilling me about Adam's death. I thought it was normal, that everyone had these voices and I just kinda ignored it. Didn't want to tell anyone about the voice, because I was scared of what it could mean. A year or so later I started work, and started suffering financially which induced a lot more stress. I went from job, to job for a few years, eventually ending up in scaffolding. By this time there were a lot more voices in my head than one, but I couldn't tell you how many even now, because I drowned it out with music and work. During my time there the voices were telling me to hurt people, to beat them with a scaffold tube. I ignored it of course but eventually ended up listening to them, and hospitalized a young boy. That's how it all started. The very first signs? HMN. It was mostly like depression. I just didn't care about anything. Nothing excited or interested me. I was a very good student. This was my sophomore year of high school, and I just stopped doing my homework. I didn't really care about doing anything, even eating. I got paranoid, like I was concerned that people were watching. A lot of the realization and feeling, like I was in a dream. Then came the delusions and the voices. I had already been seeing a psychiatrist when this all started for other reasons. OCD, so they caught on to the prodromal phase fairly quickly. I was put onto antipsychotics a couple months after my symptoms started. Still ended up having a psychotic break and needed to be hospitalized. Eventually I ended up on clozapine, last resort type of med, and that was awful. Now I'm much better, though graduated from college with an engineering degree, gainfully employed. I still have some impairment, but I'm pretty high functioning. I'm not 100% schizophrenic, but I do have a psychotic disorder nose. It was like treading the line between reality and fantasy. I'd go about my life as normal, but then I'd see a man with long arms and a long tongue walking down the street. I'd serve customers at my job, who had 50 eyes. Someone had a conversation with me, while I did my macupe in the apartment I lived in alone. When you still have half a rational mind, it's very strange to watch your mind slip into total madness. That's where the delusions come in. You start to question every bit of your reality, from who your friends are to who you are. The walls are watching you. They're alive. God, it's so bizarre. It wasn't even really distressing for some reason. Just weird. Most of my psychosis is mood related, so luckily antidepressants and anti-anxiety meds help dispel the hallucinations. I'm doing very well right now and only struggle with a bit of anxiety. To this day, my psychosis is something only a few people close to me know about. As a schizophrenic, I think I can take this one. When I was about 15, I started hearing different types of voices in my head. Whether they were positive or negative was dependent on my current state of mind. 
As it progressed and worsened as I got older, I was institutionalized and misdiagnosed as bipolar II. It wasn't until I was 21 that I was properly diagnosed and medicated. I guess the first signs was delusions and voices in my head, mainly delusions. I went through a phase where I was the biggest conspiracy theorist on the planet and had an explanation for everything. If anyone has any more questions regarding schizophrenia, I'd be happy to answer. First signs were my anger. I suffered a major trauma in the developmental stage of my childhood, and I was a very angry kid. I learned to bottle it up, now I learned to let it go. I think the closest thing to crazy was seeing a phosphorescent green eye. Whenever it was dark, I gave it a personality, and it lulled me to sleep every night. Skip to university, smoking pot every day for 2 years and I get a psychotic break, and I'm the most anxious I've been in my entire life. Go to the inpatient ward for 2 weeks, spend 6 months in full time care by my parents. The worst paranoia is, when you can't find out the source of the voice, so it gets worse. I've heard the voice of a father and son outside, repeating my thoughts and emotions aloud. I'm recovering really well. My meds have been reduced with the intention of cutting them out completely. I felt like I had just been awakened or reborn. A feeling like I was about to go viral. It was the best I felt in my entire life. The door was finally open, and I could just walk through and collect my riches. Now I knew money wasn't just going to fall into my lap, I needed a plan. I considered writing a post on Facebook to find a friend interested in starting a business. This is all good, but unfortunately my delusions were just getting started. This was also the time I decided to drop out of school. I was now at home and away from all my friends. The high I was feeling is now wearing off and am feeling depressed to be back home with nothing. Now this is where I went from being healthy to unhealthy. I wasn't trying to make moves or anything. I'm too lazy for that. Instead I said to my mother I just feel like you mowed something. At this point it gone from feeling motivated to do something to feeling like someone wasn't holding up their side of the bargain. I was getting angry that there wasn't a new Bugatti outside my bedroom window whenever I woke up. I started becoming paranoid about others. Early on I explained to my mother my drug use which is something I completely regret doing now. Anyways, I felt like people were following me and were connected through some network that allowed them to communicate what they were observing. So say a truck was following me, now say that truck took an exit. Another car would pull up and replace the truck in following me. They were communicating with each other and knew when to engage me. I was convinced I had telepathic powers. I started making up and believing any random crazy story I could think of. I think if I had more time to adjust after the crazy high none of these symptoms would have taken place. I think it would have worked out better if I stayed at school and tried talking through some of my thoughts. My friends would have been able to correct me as I was still feeling very soft and gullible from the high. Instead of doing that I chose to confide with death grips. Listening to them 24 over 7 started having me feel like I was in some secret operation to save the world. Again these thoughts would have been avoided had I just stayed in school. However I'm a terrible student and I knew I was never going to graduate but still, I wished I stayed at school. I've tried writing at least 5 different versions of this postal mayo. In retrospect, probably that my university professors had a vast conspiracy and that my boss at the time wanted to kill me. I have suffered from psychosis in the past. It's mostly the stream of thoughts slash delusions that entered my mind. Most I knew were fake slash assumed wrong. But eventually one seemed real, and then another, and another. Antipsychotics fixed it. The side effects are shitty though. I have schizoaffective disorder, which is kind of like bipolar disorder and schizophrenia mushed together. I guess is the best and easiest way to describe it. I was finally correctly diagnosed about 2 years ago, but before I was, I was not on the correct medication, so it made my hallucinations worst. I just remember from a really young age this silhouette of a man following me around everywhere, not ever interacting with me or anything, just like there. I always thought he was there to protect me, but the older I got the more violent he got. I'm 21 years old, and this hallucination has been a huge part of my life for the first 19 years, but when I was finally correctly diagnosed, I have not seen him since. I don't take any sort of medication, 
I know that people might frown on that decision. I do hallucinate still, but they are all nice. It's never anything scary. I guess the best way to describe it now is that everything I see is swirly, similar to the starry starry night painting. Constantly moving. Also people glow different colors now, which is kind is distracting and strange to me, but I've come to accept it, and I dk I feel like I really have found peace with my hallucinations, I know that is very rarely the case for people who experience visual and auditory hallucination, but I just try not to talk about it too much now. I have schizoaffective disorder. I thought at first I was just depressed or bipolar. My emotions were only extremes and there was little to no ambivalence. The thing is, I never had hallucinations until much later. I started having a lot of anxiety and paranoia about situations though. I would stand frozen outside of stores because, even though I needed to go in there and buy things, I was sure that all the people would stare at me and whisper about me. I would imagine what they would say over and over and over in my head, until I would just not go in. That turned into not leaving the house. There were some other small signs to that I never imagined had anything to do with it. In the end, I was diagnosed and am dealing with it. It's only recently that I've had hallucinations. They are very slight and don't interrupt my life that much and tend to only happen when I'm very stressed or tired. I'd say my first hint was when people started following me around at work. I didn't see them, but everyone started to look like my enemy. Someone was leaving secret messages on the bulletin board and no one else seemed to notice. Sometimes I'd be out walking and things would be too bright too sharp, almost pixelated, and some noises would be too loud. I'd wake up in my house, and something would be different. As if everything were too small, too large, or moved slightly to the left. Like someone was playing some prank on me. It went away, and then came back, went away and then came back progressively lasting longer each time. I would see fire and smoke all the time. I think this came from a long time fear of house fires. I would hear someone calling my name when I'm alone. I take meds now and don't see or hear anything, but this thread scares me for what my future could be. Lots of depression and manic behavior. It never manifests itself typically. Sometimes you can have psychosis for a day or a week. Sometimes you can do something as simple as sleeping all day. Diagnosis is really like taking a number and hoping your doctor listens before you really do lose your shit, and I mean all of your shit. And yes, I'm going to propose that most medicines cripple you more than the disease itself. Worst experience of my life. Zombified. Stressed. No communication. Depressed. Fat as fuck. Zyprexa. Invega. Risperdal. Just give me a Xanax please. Spare me the fucking pain. I feel like schizophrenia is coming for me, and there's nothing I can do. I've had signs since childhood. I don't hear voices. I have had maladaptive daydreaming since very early childhood though. I sometimes see flashes, but not full hallucinations. I don't have delusions. I'm paranoid about my appearance and I don't trust them, but that's based on threats that they've made in the past. I have trouble concentrating, and I don't get a lot of sleep. I don't really have natural facial expressions, but I was also neglected in early childhood which can cause that. I took a DNA test a while back that said I had a 3 times higher risk of schizophrenia, but I don't know what that means for me. I don't know many people in my BO family, and my BO mother died young. I can't get help, because my appearance would take advantage of how vulnerable it would make me. I know I can never touch any kind of hallucinogenic drug. They toss around schizophrenia, schizoaffective, and bipolar, but I started hearing voices in elementary school. I hear three distinct voices and have internal conversation with them. Sometimes I black out and I know one of them has been out. Just the one, though. In the background, I hear static voices, like you've got a recording of a large crowd going, and the quieter around me it is, the quieter they are. Going to crowded places is horrible. I never thought anything was wrong with me, since I thought everyone felt this, except for the one time I listened to the more violent voice and hurt someone after they had hurt me. Then I realized I was different and just withdrew into myself. I didn't want to admit I was a freak and be institutionalized by my mother. Two years ago, after pressing from my so, I was diagnosed and started meds. 
they dimmed the static, shut up the more violent voice mostly, but I hated that it quieted the other two voices. They all have themselves names, and they all have pasts. I've been off my meds for about a year, and to be honest, I'd rather just try to handle it myself. I've lived with it for so long. I only ever listened to the violent voice once. I experienced severe depression and mood swings, and have self-harmed a lot, but I've been clean from self-harm for just shy of a year, and I think I've got a grip on it. I refuse to take the zombie meds again. They filled the silence and voices, but I wasn't me. It started when I was young, so I'm more used to handling it than a few people I've met who didn't start to show symptoms until later in their lives, so I'm grateful for that. When I was about 6, I was trying to sleep in my room. My brother was in the bunk below me snoring. Then as I laid there, black shadow hands came up from below the bed, and a doll-like face hovered over me. I don't remember if there were any voices, but I do remember hands were pitch black, with the most coming off them. I could touch them. My mom came in, because I was crying, and brought me downstairs to watch TV with her. I never actually fell asleep. That I knew. It was just the start. I don't have schizophrenia. But I was diagnosed as one befire going to psychosis N. O. S then to generalized anxiety disorder. Which is why I was so young when it started. The people out to get me. Shadows hiding monsters that were actually there. Faces chasing and following me. Voices calling me. Terrifying stuff. <laughs>